What's up, bigger pockets? So, is house hacking in today's market, today's market of higher interest rates, doesn't make sense. So, is it a great move or a dumb move? That's what we're talking about today. So, who am I? My name is Chris Lopez. And my real estate investing team in Denver has helped house hackers buy almost 200 properties. That's over $80 million in real estate. Plus, I have house hacked myself multiple times. I have learned a lot of things and a lot of things that you don't want to do. So I am double fisting water and caffeine. Let's get into the show. So the million dollar question, does house hacking still make sense today with rising interest rates? Simply put, the answer is yes. Here are three reasons why. Number one, people always need a place to live, including you and your potential renters or Airbnb guests. They all need a place to live. Secondly, with interest rates going up, that actually bumps more people out of the buying pool and puts them back into the rental pool, meaning there's more need for rental properties. Third, real estate is historically a great investment during inflationary times. Now, of course, with all that said, you still have to be smart with your money and still make sure that the house hack investment works for you. And that's where our three factors for house hacking success come into play. Now, think about these as three circles. Circle one, circle two, circle three. And we need to find where they overlap. That is the key to success with house hacking. Now, of all the house hacks that my team has helped investors get into, the vast majority have been successful and some have not been successful. And all of those issues go back to these three factor alignments. So let's go into details. But before we do, here's your first pro tip. House hacking is a balance of science and art. You are buying a future rental property. So that's the science part, that's the spreadsheet part. But the art part is that you have to live there. So while you're living there for that year, two or three years, it has to work for you and your situation. Factor number one, what are your goals? I'm not just talking about your real estate investing goals, but set your big picture goals to help you achieve financial freedom. Once you have those big picture goals, then we're gonna bucket down the portion for house hacking and real estate investing. Because house hacking, in my opinion, is still the best way to build a rental portfolio. So write down your big picture goals and your goals for real estate. How much cash flow do you want? What type of net worth do you want? And assign a timeline on there. Now, most importantly, and for pro tip number two, write down your damn goals. I know everyone says this, but it is vital. You know why everyone says it? Because it works. Like for example, I not only write down my goals every year, but I also share them publicly with my clients and every investor I work with. If you wanna copy me, hit me up on Bigger Pockets and DM me. Now here's the second part to your goals. And this goes back to that art and science question. We are buying future rental properties as house hacks. Now you're living in the property, what do you need as an individual or family unit to make it work for you. And basically, this is like a spectrum of privacy. Now, to stereotype it, if we have a young single individual over here, they have a lot less needs and a lot less privacy needs. Now, you take someone like me, who's 40, with a wife, two kids, two dogs, and a bunch of stuff, I need a lot more privacy. There is no right or wrong, but it depends where do you fall on the spectrum. And that comes back to the art and science balance of this. So make sure you know what it is, because this goals circle must overlap with the other two circles. So factor number two, what is your strategy you're gonna implement during house hacking? Now here's another pro tip. House hacking a fourplex is not the only way to go out there and house hack. In fact, less than 10% of the house hack properties we have sold have been multifamilies, duplexes, triplexes, or fourplexes. The other 90% are these other strategies. We're talking about room by room rentals on a single family home, Airbnb being short term guest, medium term rentals to traveling nurse, nurses and corporate rentals. And there are even options for people that don't want roommates or tenants on their property. Again, there is no right or wrong strategy. What is the best option for you? 
Now, another key pro tip is understanding what your dollar per hour cost is. Because if you wanna go out there and run and self-manage an Airbnb, that takes time every single week. It takes time to set up the systems and it takes time to go out there and manage the properties or go out there and clean the properties when cleaners don't show up. Now it takes a lot more time than someone that says, hey, you know what, I want no roommates. Again, no right or wrong, but what's the best option for you in your current situation? So make sure you know how much you're willing to put into something and how much is actually costing you because your time is not free. Factor number three, what is your local market? And by this, I mean, you need a market reality check. I talk to a lot of people that want to house hack and that want to invest in my market, but what they want doesn't match up with our market. Oh great, you want a 12% cap rate property? I'm like, great, do you want a unicorn with that as well? Because you know what, it doesn't work. If your strategy and your goals don't match the market, we have a major issue with alignment there. Now, here is a common question I get from the Bigger Pockets community. How do you know what your local market reality is? Well, I got a two for one pro tip for you. Log into your Bigger Pockets account, go set up some keyword alerts in the forums for your local market. And the second thing is go use the agent finder and start talking to real estate agents in your local market, because between those two, you will learn a lot and build your local team. So plug in and be active. All right, so those are the three factors or circles. And you need to identify each circle there and then see where the overlap is. And in that overlap area, that is your buy box. That is your strategy box. Now, very few people get it all right in minute one. It takes some time and it takes some process to go through. But if those things are aligned, there is a problem you have. So realize that there'll probably be some compromise in there. Now, the best way to show you this is that we're gonna be doing multiple videos in the season where we go walk properties with different types of investors and talk about their strategy and how they aligned their three factors. Now that you have your buy box with the overlapping circles, let's talk about property types because the easiest way to go from conceptual to reality is by going through and talking about different property types, different types of assets that you can buy and move into. Now, I've had this discussion with thousands of prospective investors here in Denver, and 90% of what I'm about to tell you will apply nationally to your market. So the first question I get, how do I house hack a fourplex? Well, your next pro tip will tell you, don't get tunnel vision on one type of property. Out of the 200 properties we've sold, do you wanna know how many triplexes and fourplexes we've sold in the last almost three years? One. That is one property, which is less than 1% of the house acts we've sold. And here's why. We can't talk about buying a certain type of property or asset without talking about financing. You need a lender. You need a bank to go out there and be your debt partner when you go out there and buy a house hack. Now, there's basically three main ways people finance their house hacks. The first is a 5% down conventional loan. The second is a 3.5% down FHA. The third is a 0% down VA loan. So my first question to everyone who wants to house hack a triplex or fourplex is, hey, Mr. Investor, are you a veteran? Yes or no, most are no. So therefore they cannot use a VA loan so they didn't serve in the military. All right, so let's keep going. The next is duplexes. Now while duplexes are still in the multifamily space of two, three, four units, the FHA self-sufficiency test does not apply to a duplex. Still can't use a 5% down conventional loan, but 0% VA and 3.5% down FHA will work for a duplex. Now out of the 10% of house acts we buy that are multifamilies, the vast majority of those are duplexes. But overall, that's about 10% of the house acts we've helped clients buy. The rest are single family residences. So a lot of four or five bedroom homes, because they're perfect for room by room strategies, or finding a single family home with a mother-in-law suite or ADU. ADU is accessory dwelling unit, might be called a granny flat or carriage house in your market. It's basically a separate living space or structure on the property that acts as a second unit, but still zoned as single family. Those single family homes with mother-in-law suites or ADUs 
That's often the sweet spot right now for our house hackers. And they are great for having privacy, having roommates, doing Airbnbs, doing medium term rentals. It gives you lots of options. Now, this next one may surprise you. The last couple of years, clients are buying a lot more new build townhomes. Now here in my market in Denver, we have a lot of infill townhomes in the hot parts of town where they're modern, they're in great spots, and they're brand new properties. And the reason this works for a lot of investors is because they're gonna command top dollar in rent while they're living there or once they move out. They're in great spots and also fits a lot of our investors' criteria. They want something turnkey and simple. Their life is busy, their career is busy, and they're not a handyman DIY person. Nothing wrong with that. That all goes back to those three factors and knowing what's a good fit for you. All right, there's one more thing I need to fit in here. It's a very important pro tip that may actually keep you out of jail. When you're buying a house hack, you are using an owner-occupant loan. That means you have to live in the property. So the pro tip is actually live in the property and don't commit mortgage fraud. I'm amazed at how many people and how many lenders like, oh yeah, just say you'll live there, but don't worry about it. It is insane to me. When I started years ago, a lender told me that, I pushed back and I said, hey, send me over all the details and page 18 or 19 or 20 of your loan docs. It very clearly says you will have to live in the property. And here's a fact, people get in trouble. I've heard of stories, people going to jail. Long story short, it is not worth it. Do not commit loan fraud. Either live in the property and play by the rules or don't. It's that simple, it's black and white in my mind. So the next thing to talk about is how do you analyze the property? And this is a very, very common mistake house hackers make. They look at the property while you're living there. And that is one aspect of it, but you know what? There's two ways you should be analyzing your house hack properties. The first is while you're living there, and the second is once you move out and turn it into a rental property, which one do you think is most important? All right, I'm waiting. What's your guess? It's when you move out as a rental property. That is the most important thing because remember, you are buying and living in a future rental property. So look at the numbers while you're living there, ugly numbers once you move out. And in all of our upcoming videos, we will do an analysis with the bigger pockets calculator to run through those numbers. And this rolls us into our last critical thing to talk about, the house hack stack. So here's the easiest way to explain it. Let's say you and I are both buying house hacks. You buy a nice house hack, I buy a nice house hack, they're the exact same thing. Now fast forward 10 years, you are living for free, so you decide to stay in a house hack for the next 10 years. I decided to buy a new house hack every single year for the next 10 years. Now, 10 years, you own one property, I own 10 properties. Who's probably more wealthy? I am. And that's all the house hack stack is. Because the way to go out there and build wealth in real estate, the way to go out there and achieve financial freedom is to acquire multiple properties. The more properties you own, the more leverage you use, Generally speaking, the wealthier you are, the more delay gratification you get in the future. And that brings us back to the power of house hacking. You're able to buy a very expensive asset, a 300,000, a half million dollar asset for zero to 5% down. The leverage is insane you get on that. So when it comes to building your real estate portfolio, AKA your house hack stack, think about a chess game. If you're buying your first property, you're doing one, pawn move, but that was one move with lots of moves in the future. So this requires a couple of things. One is patience. Realize this takes years. It takes decades to create real wealth. The second is that you need to be strategic in your moves. A move today, aka a property you buy today, has consequences down the road. Ideally, they're positive or they could be negative. Which brings us to another pro tip. Make sure you're working with a lender that understands house hacking. I have talked to so many potential house hackers who bought a property before they met me and all of our content and they got into a property or a loan. Great, it works for them that day. But when they add to their house hack stack and buy the next property, they're unable to do it because the loan and property you get today has an impact. Here's the most simple example I can give you. 
I bought my first half sack just about 10 years ago. It was a two bedroom, two bathroom condo. I bought for about $70,000, lived in it for a couple years, moved out, convert to a rental property. I had bought the property for such a low amount during the past real estate crash, my mindset was, oh wow, I will just pay off this property and never sell it. So that was my mindset. And after I moved out for the next five, six years, I cash flow 100 bucks, 200 bucks a month, you know, a good amount, but I never actually took money out of that checking account. Now, 10 years after I bought the property, rents increased like 30 or 40% but the value went up by almost 300%. It almost tripled in value. So the market gave me the return of equity. So I sold the property, walked with almost $200,000 in proceeds, utilized a 1031 exchange to defer taxes, and then went out there and bought a fourplex. So I sold the property for $230,000 and bought a $850,000 fourplex. I went from $200 in cash flow to about $1,000 a month in cash flow. And not just today's cash flow, but I also get more future cash flow, more appreciation, more tax benefits. And that comes down to the house hack stack and playing that chess game. How do you stack your house hacks to not just make it sense for today's environment where you're living there, but how do you plan ahead so in year two, year five, year 10, it works towards your financial freedom goals. Remember that the goal is to go out there and build your house hack stack. Use the three factors, use all the pro tips, and use all the bigger pockets, resources, and community to go out there and create your plan. But most importantly, write it down and execute it. And that's why for the rest of this season, we are walking real properties with real people reviewing real numbers and real house hack stacks to show you ways that different people are going out there and using house hacking to achieve financial freedom. So stick around for future episodes, but make sure you hit me up on social for more tips and behind the scenes content. Make sure you like and subscribe to this video, leave your comments, let me know what your house hack stack looks like. What is it? Now I'm like 30 years. Do you know the thing where she like asks the question to the audience and then she asks it again? <laughs>